What is up, y'all? All right, so it's September something, 2023, smoking a doink, sitting here watching a film when the doink started kicking in. And uh, stuff makes me want to be creative and purposeful and helpful to others. So I think it's time to finally share what I've been doing to heal and recover from topical steroid withdrawal. So, I'm now in month 20 of my withdrawal. I'm in month 20 of my withdrawal. I started in February of 2021. It's kind of really hard to recall. Like, I write it down too, and it's such a fuzzy recollection. Um... Month 20, the first year was incredibly painful and exhausting. Um, I guess I'll do another video on the timeline of things. So I guess to keep things intentional and concise, uh, this video will just be about what I've been doing that's that's working and maybe I'll go over a little bit of other things that I have been have tried that may or may not support others. So for the first I don't know many weeks could be many months it's super hard to recall. Uh I was taking refuge in water. So uh bathtubs for hours at a time, sometimes literally entire days in the tub. And this is what I was also doing when I was still on the steroids in years past, dealing with the red skin syndrome and the addiction symptoms. So I resorted to that as soon as the withdrawal kicked in, like the very next day that I ceased use. Um, resorted back to what I found comfort in before which was just spending a lot of time in water and then covering everything with uh annulments like petroleum jelly and all sorts of different creams so i don't think that was working for me i think to be honest i think it set me back a little bit when i think back about and think of all the exudate that i was losing in those baths the bath was like milky white often um, and the bottom of the tub covered in sediment um, this is definitely too much uh, proliferation than what my body was able to actually keep up with so I found very quickly everything was just getting more and more raw my scalp my it was my entire body. Um, so, uh, eventually, I came across, after, I don't know, a few months, I, it's so hard to recall. I guess I could look back at f photos and kind of start gauging. But anyway, so, a couple months into the withdrawal, sometime, I discovered NMT. Um, not really sure how I came across it. Maybe somebody on Instagram. Um, I don't really know. But I'm super thankful for whoever it was that first spark and everybody else who has formed what allowed me to believe in this this process. So the the biggest thing that I think has contributed to my recovery is no moisture treatment as designed uh, and prescribed by Dr. Kenji Sato. Dr. Sato 
is the motherfucking man. <laughs> uh, and I say that with all seriousness. Um, so, sorry to blow that in your face. So, came across NMT, and I was like, damn, that's fucking challenging, dude. It's like, if, <laughs> if topical steroid withdrawal wasn't already hard enough, NMT, you know what? But, but looking back, it, it's actually easier. The pain and discomfort that I was experiencing, um, doing the, all the baths and all the moisturizing, um, that was a really painful time really painful time and although no moisture treatment looks really uncomfortable like with all the flaking and the crusting that that you leave on the body um it's just a different pain it's not better or worse but in retrospect with how effective it was it's like equal parts crazy messed up pain but this actually gets you out of the darkness, um, even though it's super duper challenging, and it's really mostly a mental game. Um, anyways, so found no moisture treatment, but so yeah, so it was it was so challenging seeming that I couldn't adhere to the protocol. I just couldn't get with it. Um, I like kind of had faith in it, but I was also like still on the fence i was like this could be dangerous without any doctor to supervise me um so maybe i'll just do at least stop mo actively moisturizing the skin um so I, I couldn't adhere to the water intake restrictions um and the time restrictions but I, I could at least just not moisturize. And I found a long time ago, the first time I started experiencing the crust dash, um, this was like, had to be four, like 14 years ago now. I started getting the crust dash when I was like around 19 or before that sometime. Um, and then I went to jail in, did I say 2019? 2009. Um, And then I went to jail in 2010 and went through a mini topical steroid withdrawal because they wouldn't give me steroids. And when I was in, in that, they just, it's Los Angeles County jail. So they were just like, dude, we don't fucking care. <laughs> it's not that they weren't allowed to or something. It was just, yeah, they just didn't fucking care. So, um, I came out of jail, all the guards too. I remember the guards were like, wouldn't touch me because they thought and it might have had some staff um but i remember at the time the dude one of the jailers was all afraid to touch me i was like it's okay man it's just really bad eczema <laughs> it was actually topical steroid addiction slash withdrawal at the time so then i get out of jail i finally talk to a doctor who tells me i keep like putting all sorts of stuff there and it just kept getting raw and just just raw and you know messed up so i finally found a doctor who even though he prescribed st this topical steroids he said this one i actually have to just let dry he told me to let it dry and fall off so that kind of clicked once i finally found nmt i was like my entire body is basically like that spot on my lip that i remember which it actually was exactly like right so i'm like okay i just gotta let all this dry out that makes sense so I started the no basically it was just moisturizer withdrawal they call it something else mw versus nmt um so i started the moisturizer withdrawal and that that was bringing down it that did seem to start the direction um so it it brought down like a from 100% entire body flare probably brought it down to like 
seventy percent body flare. Maybe this, these are just very random guesses, shots in the dark. So it probably maybe brought it down thirty percent or something like that. So it was just like now it was very large patches on my body. It was no longer an entire body flare, and then it, it, it reduced to what seemed to like follow a lot of the lymphatic system. Also something I noticed, which I'm sure a lot of people noticed the same thing. Um, let me plug this phone in. So, uh, started the moisturizer with, started moisturize, started not using moisturizers and also this is, I guess this is the, the new thing that I've adopted was the not showering. And I went for many months without showering or bathing many months at a time. I think there was probably a, like a year stretch of time where I showered like five times. I could actually count on one hand how many times I showered and bathed. Um, so that seemed to help that like gave me a little bit of hope. Um, but it wasn't really until the beginning of this year, the beginning of 2023. See, I'm getting it all mixed up, dude. It's such a cloudy time. Okay. So <laughs> cut back. I quit in February of 2022. In the beginning of February, 2022, I ceased all steroid use. Um, and then flash forward the beginning of 2023, I, I finally started really attempting to adhere to <laughs> the, <clears throat> the water intake restriction. So up until that time, I had been like flirting with the idea and I'd kind of do it here and there. Um, I'd kind of do it here and there, but I could never really be consistent with it, whether it was the volume restriction or the time restriction or the, the sleep pattern or the daily exercise. So I would do little bits here and there, I'd do partial, 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 never really consistent until the beginning of 2023. So now beginning of 2023, I can actually have one here. Um, <laughs> I eventually, <laughs> it's really, it was a really challenging thing to do, you know, and I acknowledge anybody who gives this a try and encourages everybody to not be so hard on yourself if it, you seem like you can't adhere to this protocol. Um, I eventually had to make myself a sticker sheet. <laughs> I don't know if this... It's showing up in reverse on my screen. I don't know if this how it actually comes off, but I finally made a scoring system too, to where I could have a little bit of leeway. But like, I don't know. I'll go into the sheet later. It's pretty uh, cool, I guess. <laughs> in uh, my mind, it helped me. Um, anyway, started getting really intentional with with adhering to the entire protocol. Um, and it only really took a couple weeks to see. I mean, I could see the difference in like oozing and general inflammation in days. I could see a visual improvement in weeks. And I saw like a significant, real healing within a couple months. Um, and within those months I was very quickly able to finally wear shoes after a year of not even being able to put a sock on um or even wear flip-flops for a long time to actually being able to wear shoes and then I jumped right into exercise uh lifting weights at a gym because I was, it was like kind of getting into summertime so it was getting hot I got the farm gym going on outside but the heat and the sweat you already know so thankfully I was able to get shoes on um in the beginning of June basically so what I finally did after a couple months of like doing decently 
adhering to the protocol. Um, a few weeks before my birthday, I told myself I want three weeks of adherence to NMT for my birthday. Like that was the thing <laughs> that I was <laughs> giving myself for my birthday. So I made this whole thing and it fucking helped. Uh, it really worked. I definitely suggest using Panda stickers. Um, it's fun. And uh, it's like, a, it's like scientific, you know, like the, just sticking the sticker on there. It, gives you a little dopamine release you know and you're like i want to do that again it seems silly until you do it and then when you're honest with yourself <laughs> it's awesome so i did that for three weeks um and i think it was after that three weeks that i could actually wear shoes and then i started going to the gym every day um damn dude this this story is so hard to tell i've been like not making anything about this because i've been super overwhelmed by this process i've been trying to like write it out like maybe i'll make a plan a couple videos so i could like compartmentalize things and it's so such a jumbled experience it's the same thing as like how it's just not a linear process like you're it's not just like you're healing like this um, it's, you know, it's all over the place and that's very much how connecting the dots looking back is also, it's just like, so I'm just doing it. You know, I'm just throwing this out there. Hopefully y'all can stick through some of the rambling to get the little gems. <sighs> Anyways, <sighs> I've been vaping. <laughs> I did quit smoking tobacco during TSW so that's pretty cool I wasn't really smoking cigarettes I was smoking spliffs <sighs> spliffs um lots of spliffs oh my god copious amounts of weed so that's one thing that I have been doing to get myself through this is smoking copious amounts of cannabis. Um, like high grade stuff that I've been growing. Very good. <laughs> Not trying to toot my own horn, just toot my own horn. Uh, yeah, for a while, I mean, I probably had to been smoking like at least seven grams a day yeah <laughs> um it's just yeah it, it was helping i don't know maybe not you know who knows but i'm here fucking now so i mean yeah it it, it definitely helped um it doesn't really help the pain or the anything it distracts the mind, so that's something to keep in mind is that uh, a lot of it is a mental game, not that we like we're like act actively creating the scenario and having to um, guilt and blame ourselves because it's really easy to spiral into, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, oh, you know, and then, like, that, like, it infers that, like, I was wrong and making wrong decisions, and I was, that's bad. Um, just looking at what worked and what didn't work in a, from a neutral point of view. Um, yeah, using cannabis for me definitely has had been like a huge uh crutch the support um and i still now i only smoke maybe one of these which is like probably less than a gram at night time um so that's progress there <laughs> i totally derailed from laughing at my vape uh So yeah, so I, 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 the spliffs thing, I think 
that's a whole nother subject. It was just too intermingled, you know. Whenever I wanted need, wanted the nicotine fix, I'd be smoking weed. Every time I wanted the weed fix, I'd be smoking the nicotine. And then it's just like... So once I quit mixing the two, I probably... I think I started smoking a lot less. Now I've tapered down to maybe one a night. And I'm actually trying to do even less than that. Because I've been smoking so much for so long now uh anyways so smoking cannabis definitely helped to take my mind off of things and to help me just be in the present moment um going to the gym or exercising in general okay so this is this is definitely a rabbit hole to dive down so The mini trampoline, the motherfucking mini trampoline is was huge. So I think that's when I first started to feel like the iceberg start, the, gla the, sorry, the, the glacier start cracking off and starting to move. Uh, got a mini trampoline. And it was in the winter because it was freezing. So I stuck the mini trampoline in the greenhouse and I started out like my ankles were so swollen, my knees swollen. I couldn't bend them all the way e either joint. I couldn't bend my knees or bend my ankles much at all. If I did, it'd just be like squeezing out ooze behind them and tearing apart the front and and expanding and shit. So, uh, so I took the mini trampoline in the greenhouse where it's a little bit warm, warm enough to not be freezing here in Oklahoma. It gets pretty cold. And I started out with like five or ten minutes like for the first week like I just started out with these like little five ten minute sessions like it was like kind of like the most I could bear and after about a week I kind of realized that I do have a little bit more mobility um it, it allowed me to it, it allowed me to explore my mobility so I was able to then kind of be like, all right, let's try a little bit longer. And within the first couple of weeks, I developed this thing where I just decided to put on not my headphones. I couldn't wear them at the time. Um, I would get my little speaker that my phone is resting on. Uh, get this little speaker and turn on some music, five songs. So I know a song can range anywhere from two minutes to seven minutes or whatever, you know, averaging, I don't know. If, I don't really know the average of a song. That's something I could look up or maybe you could look up and put in the... <laughs> so I do five, five songs. I just come out myself to five songs and that was kind of a very tangible thing that I felt I could do. And so it would be anywhere from, you know, I don't know, 15 minutes. It could be anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on how long those five songs are. But as long as I did five songs, I felt like I was, you know, I was completing. Um, so then I started getting more comfortable with the five song thing. And started thinking like, okay, maybe this should be a little bit more measurable. And so I could create more consistency because it was clearly working. I started like immediately, immediately the swelling in my knee, in my, sorry, the swelling in my ankles was going down. That was the first thing I think that I really started being like, oh, wow, like exercise is super important <laughs> for this process. Uh I laugh because all my life I've known how important exercise is and what it does for the body and 
you know, now in a clear mind looking back, it's like, you know, of course, but in that, in the shit, super hard to see what's going to help. And it's a very scary thing to move the body, <laughs> you know, like it's so painful. A lot of y'all know that, uh, it's fucking scary to do anything because like, not only is it just a terrible experience, but it brings a fear of making things worse, which it could. It's actually a really valid thought and consideration. Um, but I also found myself living in fear too, which that's something that I learned to reprogram through the exercise. Um, so, <sighs> fuck, so, you know, it gets, it's like all over the place, man. It's not just the weed. I, I do this when I'm sober, uh, talking and writing about this. So, so I see the, the swelling in my ankles going down and I'm like, okay, let's make this more measurable. Like it's clearly working. So let's kick it into high gear. So then I started commi committing to like 30 minutes per day. I'd put on a timer and then I'd play my music, you know, and then the timer would go off. Okay, cool. A lot more clear and concise. And eventually over, I don't know how long it took me. Could have been weeks, could have been, I mean, it probably was like a couple months where maybe like two months max where I worked up from that five minutes per day up to an hour per day so i went five minutes went five songs went 30 minutes 45 minutes an hour um and then i was getting to the point where i was like splitting it up maybe i was doing 30 minutes in the morning 30 minutes in the evening oftentimes i did it in the morning before eating i felt like it just helped process everything that was in my body from the day before before i start loading it again so I wouldn't end my water fast until after that. Also, I'd wake up still not having drank any water per NMT um, from 6 p.m. the night before all the way over to the next day. Get up, do at least 30 minutes. And then I was also intermittent fasting, a pretty wide feeding window, eight hours. So at 1030, um, then I would maybe I'd hydrate a little bit before it exercise um but it'd be very small uh, usually actually now that i think back it was oftentimes like 250 or 300 milliliters of coffee oftentimes cold brew um so i'd wake up in a fasted state have black coffee no cream no sugar have that still in the fasted state do the rebounding, which is the mini trampoline. Um, and then afterwards, then I'd probably go right into my meal, my first meal at 1030. And that'd be my feeding window is 1030 a.m. to 630 p.m. And my drinking window sometimes was like, I'd like be okay if it was 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I had like a 12-12 schedule, 12 hour on, 12 hour off liquids and then a 16 8 fasted to feeding window um let me think a little bit so that was working really well uh, the swelling in my ankles was going down, the ooze was going down, the redness was going down, my appetite up, it was helping me sleep a little bit better. So, um, at the same time, I was like dialing in my circadian rhythms. So, I'd do morning sunlight viewing, I'd view the sun sometime around 7, whenever it's coming up. <clears throat> and I live in the woods where it's ideal to where the 
the Como Rebbe is, uh, is piercing through the canopy, i.e. the sun is shining through the trees and the leaves. And I can actually look like very much directly at the sun without damaging my eyes with it being at such a low level and behind this canopy. Um, don't take my word on that and just go out and stare at the sun and fry your eyeballs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I felt safe doing what I was doing. So I was doing that per uh, Dr. Huberman's recommendation. He's an ophthalmologist and and uh, neuro something else studies, you know, the brain and how the eyes specifically work with the brain. So he suggests viewing morning light and not necessarily directly. He just talks about like having the sun like like in the corner of your eye or something. Um, getting that in in the morning when the sun is low, when the sun is low, uh, and having that low angle sun be a trigger to kind of get the circadian rhythms and consciousness oriented in time and space, right? Um, and get that cortisol spike too. I even get the chills thinking about it because I would always like, no matter how terrible and tough the night before was, um, could always look forward to this morning sunrise because it just the cortisol boost in the morning. It's just like, finally like, Oh God, like, ah, oh, the zombies are not coming anymore. We're safe. It's daylight fight or flight. I can now just set aside for maybe one hour or, you know, so, Anyway, so wake up, morning sunlight viewing. Get that in. Set the circadian rhythms. Coffee. Boom. A little more boost in cortisol after I already got a little bit of that natural. Maybe I maybe I got out most when on like once it started warming up a little bit, I get out there on the mini tramp and I do a little pre-tramping. <laughs> I do like five minutes of bouncing and looking at the sun and watching the sun turn into a little bouncy ball in the sky. Uh, let my cortisol naturally. Huh, and then I'd hit it with the coffee. Boom! Another boost. And then as the coffee kicked in to the hour of the mini tramp. Sometimes 30 minutes if I was like pressed for time, but oftentimes the full hour. Boom. 3X. 3X that. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I get those three markers in the morning and then I hit, I start eating. That's break my fast and then go about my day. At In the evening time, um... What was really working for me is to what I finally learned to block out the rest of my evening after dinner. So my brain wasn't, I finally had to acknowledge and accept that my brain was not functioning how I'd been used to at these hours of the day in the evening time. I had been up until TSW, I had been some would say a workaholic, some would say very ambitious. I was I was just going for it. I was I'm out here starting my own cannabis farm and I was just going for my dreams. I was doing everything. I was wearing all the hats. I was doing all the fundraising. I was fucking digging all the holes, digging literally, literally in the trenches, like digging French drains and trenching water lines and building fences, raising greenhouses, doing the whole thing, you know, and then TSW. <sighs> Anyways, that's another video. Uh, so... I started having to accept that my brain was no longer there anymore. Even though my heart was there, really, really going for it, really trying. My brain no longer worked like it used to for the time being, you know. And so 
I would prioritize st cooking dinner or I would, my, my family was actually here helping me. Um, so my mom was staying with me for a long time. She was helping me with everything. Um, and same thing with my girlfriend. She was just taking care of me <laughs> in every single way. Um, So about 5.36 would come around, we'd start getting dinner ready. Take that back. So I'd start eating dinner at 6. So about 5 or 5.30, start getting dinner ready, eat at 6, we'd be done eating 6.30, done drinking water by 6.30, and then... After that, it was just me time. I just, I would finally learn that it was no longer the time to think about work. It was no longer the time to have important conversations, even have phone calls in general. Um, generally t tried to stay off of social media. Um, I would basically take the next three hours to usually just watch something um maybe youtube or something on netflix or you know a film um I'd, I'd take those next three hours to do that and at the same time i'd do uh some red light therapy which i think i really do think it it's supportive um I still do it here and there, I'm trying to get at least like three or four days in per week doing it. Um, I actually haven't this whole week. I've kind of fell off of that, but as I'm speaking about it, that's something that I do think helps. Um, so I and, it, and it's uh, I'll just show you. So it's this uh, one. It's a company called best cool and it has both 660 nanometer and 850 nanometer wavelengths i think which means it has both uh, near infrared and infrared light it has the two options there it has a timer on it super cool um so from my research it's good to like it's up to like 20 minutes per spot uh, anything more than that, probably not, like, I don't think it hurts you. It's just kind of doesn't do anything more after that each day. So I'd spend 20 minutes. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't even, wasn't even thinking I was going to go all the way into this, but, um, my legs were, have always been probably one of, at least the most disabling parts, right? Cause I couldn't walk for a long time. Um, and even when I could, it's just been crazy painful, super swollen. So I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Um, being that <laughs> I'm a cannabis grower and I know how to hang a freaking light, you know, never got around to that. What I would do is... Get the light just like so. And uh, <laughs> hold it. <laughs> um, so like some of the main spots was like right in between my thighs um, and my knees. So I'd kind of spend just like 20 minutes in this spot, kind of just like holding it for a little bit. This thing gets like a lot of light everywhere, but then I just kind of focus the the most uh, concentrated part of the light on each spot for a little while. Um, oftentimes while smoking a doink and watching something entertaining. And then after 20 minutes, I'd switch to another spot. Maybe my chest was messed up a little bit or uh, oftentimes what was also a main focus was... Uh, you don't want to look directly at this light. Uh, that's pretty powerful. 
I'd get under my knees, so I'd, I'd keep my feet elevated. They're on the table right now. Um, I'd figure out a way to get this light under my knees, get the back sides of my knees right there, and then uh, and then I'd set set it on the ground, and maybe I'll just do this for the rest of the video because it's perfect time. Um, I'd set it down there on the ground and get my feet. Um, actually, this is not a great, <laughs> it's probably uncomfortable for y'all to watch like that. So, uh, I will save that for another time. <clears throat> so I'd do that. I'd do boom, boom, boom. Most troublesome areas. Watching something entertaining. And just trying to keep my mind off of the fact that I can't drink anything else. Um, I love drinking all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, herbal tea, caffeinated tea, coffee, beer, uh, water. You know, you really, NMT really teaches you how fucking awesome drinking water really is makes you real grateful to have it just like coming out of a tap just like that um you know we're I'm choosing into this whereas fuck there really are people who struggle to have clean drinking water i never like realized it so as like i could I never conceptualize what that reality was like you know, and even still, I've been drinking enough water, you know, I've been on sli a slight, on the slightly dehydrated level, but never allowing myself to become dangerously dehydrated. And uh, yeah, that for a long period of time is really mentally draining. Um, I mean, there's like a lot of science behind how well the brain can function and how much capacity it loses with like each percentage of water loss so uh so yeah i'd just take that time i'd already be so drained from all the discomfort and the pain the stress of trying to keep this business alive uh the water restriction everything to where i just that last three hours of my day I finally realized that that's just got to be you know just chilling those are the dog so, let me uh, spark up with you again. Huh, Doja? <sighs> Petting the dog. Petting the dog <laughs> helps tremendously. I'm not even really trying to make a joke out of it. I just remembered as I let Doja in. Um... Thank God for Doja the dog. Look at that dog. Won't you just look? Oh my gosh. What a Durga. What a Durg. Durga de Lurga. Huh? Durga. Durga Lurga. Durga de Lurga. Ooh, what you got? You got a yak stick? Yeah, petting the dog. Sometimes I literally tell myself, Smoke the weed, pet the dog. Just smoke the weed and pet the dog. <laughs> you know? Because uh, some of those moments are just really hard to get through. Um... Also, evening light viewing, evening sunlight viewing. 
Um, that was a lot for a while. That was done when I'd be eating dinner. The sun would be out the window that I'm facing right now. I'm at my little desk in my fifth wheel trailer. I have this little corner office view. Um, I'd get to eat my dinner and watch the sun. I'd kind of stare at it through this through this tinted glass. I, I could really stare at it. Um, but I'd also do my best to get the evening sun viewing as well. So the light therapy in general, I do uh, 20 minutes of red light, which could mean like 60 minutes with my little light. It could mean, you know, 60 minutes or 80 minutes or, you know, however many spots I decide to do. Um, if you had an entire bed, you know, that'd just be a 20 minute session. Um, anyways, so light therapy morning sun evening sun supplemented with the artificial red light um in my three-week challenge that's when i quit tobacco <sighs> um committed to no tobacco and no alcohol i still don't really drink alcohol because i feel like every time i do it uh, it still affects my skin and it make, kind of makes me flare. Um, even if, so I like drinking beer is one thing because it's like a lot of liquid. So I really stopped. I, I, that was really why I quit drinking beer. And then, so I tried drinking some liquor and, uh, I don't know just doesn't doesn't do the thing for me it used to do I still try every now and then I'm like maybe this time it'll be different maybe drinking is you know I don't know maybe I'm just in a weird state and I don't feel like it's just responsible in any means to be uh, partying <sighs> as I smoke a doink um, Oh, right in the eyeball. Right in the fucking eyeball. Dodged it, though, actually, I think. Um, Alright. I gotta edit this video now because I got too many ums and whatever. So maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just gonna post it just like this. Make y'all sit through this shit. Because <laughs> I really want to try to think of all the things that could support um, red light, intermittent fasting, water fasting, no moisture, no baths, um, strength training. Okay, so catching back on, I think we went on the tangent like a half an hour ago. Catching back on to the my original train of thought. Um, mini tramping, mini tramping, mini tramping all the way up until the beginning of June where I could start wearing shoes. Doja. Can we hold off on chewing the yak stick? Can you go... Uh, can you take that somewhere else, Doja Dog? Hey, Doja, bring it here. Bring it, bring it here. Doja, come, bring it here. Doja, bring it. Bring it here, come on, let's go, bring it. Bring it here, come, Doja. Doja, come. Doja, come. Bring it here. These are very, very challenging commands I'm asking of her. Um, uh, okay, anyways, I'm just trying to disrupt my dog's joy for the sake of your listening pleasure. Uh, Doja, let's hold off on chewing the thing for a little while. Or bring it here. Off. Doja, off. Let me see it. Doja, off. 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 
Off. Doja, off. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. You don't growl at me like that. You don't do that. Come here. Sit. Wait. Wait. Okay. I was trying to move you up here. Silly dog, you stay up there with that. You hear that? You hear all that? What the heck, man? Anyways, mini trampoline, mini trampoline, mini trampoline saved my life. And then I got to weight training and it rocked my world. So uh, by June, swelling in the feet went down. Also oozing went down to the point where I could wear socks and shoes. And the very first thing I did was go get a gym membership and go to the gym. Because even though I have this gym outside it was getting really hot i think i already mentioned this hot and sweaty and tsw is not the business um could be really bad actually could be like set you back so um i was fuck dude it's so much man ah so much stuff Okay. So the mini trampoline thing too, this is kind of like a preface to the gym time. So as I worked up the length of the rebounding sessions, I was also being very cautious as to how much I was I would exert myself because when I was still in like a very reactive flaring state, um, I found certain levels of exertion would uh, kind of elicit like a flaring response. That aside from sweating um, and getting like, yeah, moist. <laughs> <laughs> so uh moist sorry i had to do it um i found that even like if i lost my balance the uh the sensation of losing balance and the kind of startled feeling i would instantly get the pins and needles feeling throughout mainly uh, my calves and stuff, but kind of the, my entire body would be the hot, not necessarily hot, be like warm, warm pins and needles. Uh, and that was also something I'd experience if I would exert myself really hard and raise my heart rate up higher, higher. Um, I was shooting for my heart rate to be around like at least 120 beats per minute but i found oftentimes on the mini tramp i'd get up to like i don't know in the 140s maybe higher sometimes can't really recall anyways i would more just go off a subjective feeling of yeah it was kind of a feeling thing it was like along with working the time of how much i could endure it at the same time i was learning to bump up against those edges of too much too much exertion or exertion to the point of sweating and then i would i'd would stay right below that threshold you know i'd want to push myself as much as i could before getting to that point of yeah the uh, active reaction a reaction so explored those boundaries on the mini trampoline got the shoes on got the gym membership that took things to a whole new level because when i was outside or even in the greenhouse as things started warming up um 
there was only a certain there was only a certain point that I could push myself to before my body heat and the sweating and all the stuff started. But in an air conditioned gym, I could actually push myself to new levels. So immediately I started exploring those and went right into barbell strength training. Um, squat, deadlift, overhead press. Bench is cool too. I don't, not much of a bencher. Y'all might tell by my little baby chest. Oh, oh I don't need the bench. <laughs> uh, anyways, so squat, squat, deadlift, press, whatever press you want to do. As heavy as I could go for reps of anywhere between three and five. I really was just kind of trying to get to uh, just a real standard five by five. And then I'd, uh, I'd do like some accessory work, like some isolation exercises with like dumbbells um, or that's about it. I stayed away from the machines for a long time. So my theory, my theory is like my, my main focus was squatting. Um, the theory is being leg exercises as a potent driver of hormonal function. Uh, yes. Um, and cortisol production, right? Which is what we're trying to figure out again, along with all sorts of other stuff going on inside of there. So it seems like heavy compound exercises, especially ones that involve the legs, kind of just like 